Hello and welcome to today's training industry webinar, Complacency Killed the Cat, Why L&D Needs to Rethink Curiosity, sponsored by Go One. I'm Sarah Gallo, an associate editor here at Training Industry, and I'm happy you could join us today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over just a few housekeeping items to make sure we can all get the most out of the program. Throughout today's event, please feel free to chat any comments you have into your chat window and any questions you have in your Q&A window. I'll address all of your comments and or questions either throughout the event or at the end of the program during our Q&A session. Also encourage you to share the information you received today with your network. Make sure to follow the Twitter handle, GoOneCom, and the hashtag TIWebinars to stay connected. Of course, after today's event, you'll receive a brief evaluation survey. As always, we'd greatly appreciate any feedback you have for us about today's content, speaker, or anything else you'd like to share. And lastly, today's webinar will be recorded and archived on trainingindustry.com, and you'll receive an email from us with a link to the on-demand program and slides from today so you can share it with your team. If this is your first webinar with us, welcome. Here at Training Industry, we publish dozens of webinars each year on topics ranging from leadership development to design thinking, to learning technologies. We cover just about every topic relevant to learning leaders across the globe. If you have attended one of our events in the past, welcome back. All right, everyone, without any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Shannon Tipton. As owner of Learning Rebels, Shannon Tipton is a skilled learning strategist with over 20 years of leadership experience developing successful infrastructures for training departments across North America and Europe. Shannon is excited to work with organizations to develop learning solutions to achieve applicable business results. Recognized as bringing real world expertise into the learning field, Shannon integrates learning technologies to strengthen workplace alignment, enhance collaboration, and increase learning connectivity. All right, Shannon, we are happy to have you. I'll let you go ahead and take things away for us. I think you're on mute, Shannon. I am on mute. There we go. I, uh, I apologize for that. But thank you everyone for having me here today. It's always a pleasure to be in front of the training industry group. Everybody is always so uh, is always so curious and questioning, which is the perfect lead way into what we are going to do today. Uh, so as um, as Sarah said, we're here to talk about curiosity and why L&D needs to rethink curiosity. So, you know, the old saying, curiosity killed the cat, I would argue with that and say that it's actually complacency that killed the cat. And it's time for us to take a hold of curiosity in a whole new way and to show that it does indeed add business value. So are you ready? Are you ready? So here is all of my information. You've got my email address. You've got my Twitter, my uh, Facebook, Instagram, my website. I like to tell people if you can't find me, it's because the zombie apocalypse has finally hit us. And that's why everything has disappeared. But I really do encourage your questions and comments. So go ahead and feel free to post on any of your socials or ask your questions directly in the, um, in the chat or email me after we're finished. All right. So I have a poll for you in regards to uh, curiosity here. So do you consider yourself to be curious in general? So I'm interested in your responses. Yes, you're always looking to discover new things. You often fall down the rabbit hole. Yes, but you are intentional in your curiosity. If you have a question, you search for an answer. Sometimes I find myself to be a of a curious mindset. You know, I, I try to make time for curious thoughts and really to be honest, not so much. I, 
I struggle to break out of my day-to-day -day routine or struggle to break out of your common work day in order to allow for curious thoughts or curious discovery. So I'm really interested in where you fall on this spectrum. All right, everyone, take another moment to pop your answer into that poll. Three, two, one. And there you are. Oh, look at you. Uh, so we have a lot of people who are very intentional with their, with their curious mindset, which is nice. And we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about what happens when we fall down the rabbit hole. Lots of people falling down the rabbit hole. And we have people who are honest with themselves. Curiosity is not about serendipitous action per se. Sometimes you really have to plan and think about what it is you wanna be curious about. And I really do appreciate those of you who you know, looked in your heart of hearts and said, well, I'm gonna be honest here. And you're probably here to try to figure out how can I jumpstart this? How can I make curiosity more of a action that's woven into my day versus something that we jump in and out of, right? Okay. so. Uh, I'm, I'm also trying to keep an eye on the chat here. And I feel like curiosity proves the constant existence of the six degrees of separation, <laughs> six degrees of Kevin Bacon. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. And to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with a blanket definition here of curiosity. And then, you know, I see this question all the time on Twitter, you know, or let's have a Twitter chat about curiosity and everybody jumps in about their definition about curiosity. And here is in general, when I was doing my research, this, this just kept popping up. And I really do appreciate this particular definition. The desire to understand what you do not, quite simply, Right. And I think that we all find ourselves into or rather in this space of needing an answer and going down a rabbit hole or doing it intentionally to understand simply what you do not. OK, so here's our goal today. Our goal today, looking at curiosity as a business asset, jumpstarting curiosity as a mindset and then providing space for experimentation. We're going to go through each of these three topics and hopefully be able to help you tie in the conversation with others within your business to be able to say that establishing curiosity and establishing a way to have cur a curious mindset collaboration communication within our businesses actually adds business value. So some of you may be saying curiosity, a business asset, what is that all about, right? So how many of you have made in the chat, let me know, how many of you have made the connection that having a curious mindset within your organization is actually a business asset? In the chat, let's see that. Oh yes, absolutely, of course it is, of course it is. Definitely 100% every day. That's how we grow and learn. It is how we grow and learn. And it is vital to innovation. Yeah, if you're, if you're not curious, you stop growing. So subsequently, one could make the connection that if we're not curious, our business is not going to grow. Unless the rabbit hole is too deep, Jennifer, I'm with you. You know, we've all been in that place, right? Where we've jumped onto the internet and the next thing we know, an hour later, we're looking at baby goat videos, right? And it's like, wait, how did I get there? So that, that has a tendency to happen as well. An innovation department, Melanie, you rock. Oh, we need to talk more about that. I would love to learn more about that. But let's start off with a few, Uh, a few data points that I discovered that may challenge our thinking in regards to curiosity. First off, the IBM Institute for Business conducted a survey of 1500 C-level executives and asked them, what do they really need in leadership? What do they really need when it comes to leading their organization and management? And the answer was creativity. And we all know that a subset of creativity is curiosity, right? However, a survey of 520 chief learning officers told them that they actively discouraged curiosity because the company would be harder to manage 
and disagreements would arise, slowing productivity and execution. I'll let that sink in. So all of you who said curiosity is an absolute to add business value. Yeah, Erica, I'm with you. That makes me cry too. I was shocked when I read this. And so this makes us think, how are we? So we may not be CLOs or you may not be CLOs within your organization, but you certainly have influence within your organization. How are you intentionally or unintentionally being a barrier? Because another McKinsey leadership survey told us that leadership values and requires employees who question the status quo. However, that very same research shows that management intentionally or unintentionally suppress efforts to mitigate risk. And that seems to be the common thread, right? That HR, CLOs, management, they want to mitigate risk within their organizations. And that's a very fair statement. Nobody wants to put their businesses at risk. However, without questioning the status quo and without a curious mindset, we know that organizations will not grow. So I will leave you with this. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. You can have a strategy or a strategic mindset to lead curiosity and innovation within your organization. However, if your culture does not support that, it's an uphill battle. And I think we all know this. So it's a matter then of breaching this, breaching that barrier that is put up in front of us, and then really grabbing hold of some of the data sets to say, you know, having a curious mindset does not necessarily put our business at risk. It actually creates opportunities for growth. So here's how curiosity can help business. Okay. It could lead to, and it does lead to, according to a Harvard Business Review study on the business case for curiosity, it leads to higher levels of collaboration more open communication. It actually reduces group conflict as opposed to the CLO survey where CLOs thought it encouraged group conflict. We become more accepting of change. And most importantly, we see less confirmation bias when we allow curiosity into our business. Now I'll ask you, what other ideas do you have as to how curiosity could help your business? A deeper curiosity mindset, how can it help your business? Right, we become open to new ideas. Oh, it makes absolutely better decision-making, Bianca, absolutely. Right, and we innovate more. The more we collaborate, the more we innovate. It helps us get root causes. Oh, absolutely, Frederick. We all then become lifelong learners. And personally, that's what we all want. And we want to instill that within our organizations. Expand pers uh, perspectives. More ideas for business products and ways to pull in customers. I love that. Yeah, thinking outside of the box. Curiosity leads to discovery. And it increases psychological safety, Shannon. Oh my goodness, you just touched on a point that we're going to get to later on. So thank you for that. So yes, we have all of these other ways to be able to um, bring curiosity into the business and why it's important, right? And so Jolly, you say that curiosity is being seen as a time waster. And I think what will happen after we get through with this is for you to be able to take this information as well as some of the research that I've incorporated into this slide deck and be able to go to your business and say, this is not a time waster. This is actually a revenue producer. And who doesn't want that? Tell me a business leader that doesn't want more revenue, right? So how can we get there? Curious people succeed. This is the common denominator of success for businesses and for people. If you look at this list here, this tells you something. You know, we've got the obvious people in here that we normally see when we think about curiosity and innovation. We think about Bill Gates and we think about Steve Jobs, right? And so we have these obvious people, but let's think about 
Percy Spencer. And Percy Spencer is the person who discovered the microwave. And how did he do that? Well, he walked, he walked by a magnetron and a, a vacuum tube that, which is a vacuum tube used to generate microwaves itself, right? So he had a chocolate bar in his pocket. He walked in front of this magnetron and the chocolate bar in his pocket melted. And so he thought to himself, why did that happen? And how can we harness this energy? So one incident led to a curious thought, which led to all of us having microwaves, you know, in our kitchens today. And then we think about, you know, um, George de Mistral, and he discovered the Vel he discovered Velcro. And how he did that is he went on a hike with his dog, and he came back from this hike, and his dog was covered in burrs, and he was covered in burrs. And when he took those burrs and looked at them more closely, because his curious mind said, "Why are they sticking to me?" And when he went and looked closer, he found that. A, a burr has a hook on it and that hook hooks itself to anything that has a loop in it like fabric. Now we have Velcro and now our kids don't know how to tie their shoes because they're all Velcro. So the common denominator here is people asking, what if, how did this happen, right? And when we ask questions like this, we can directly tie curiosity to engagement, then to collaboration, and then to business results, right? And the difficult part is going from discovery to implementation, especially if your culture doesn't support that, which is why sometimes we have to start small, right? We start with little pilots. We start with um, experiment groups. Right? So these are all things that we can do, but the most important thing we can do is to add diversity to our teams. So a, um, a Boston, uh, Boston consulting group did a research survey that showed diversity leads to more curiosity and collaboration generating 19% higher revenue. 19% higher revenue if we just add some diversity within our organizations and our teams. And if we think about diversity within our teams, that's not necessarily race or gender based. That could be positional, where we think about adding diversity within the organization where we're bringing um, people from the manufacturing floor and consulting with them or management from other aspects of the business or um, some, you, you add a marketing person to your learning team. You add a finance person to your learning team. So it's not just on the surface, gender and race, which is great. We should definitely be doing more of that, but it's also how do we mix things up within our organization? So diversity is the key here. And again, what leader does not want higher revenue? So if diversity leads to more curiosity and more collaboration, then we've got the key. So now the key, the additionally here, now what we all want to know is how do we jumpstart curiosity? How do we change the mindset? Because being curious is about building that into a habit, which then builds into having the mindset to create the habit and to keep the habit. And that's where we want to go. So first, let me point out, there are two types of curiosity. There is perceptual curiosity, which is calming the itch in our brains, right? We have a question and now we've floated down the rabbit hole of the internet. And like I said before, right, an hour later, we're watching baby goat videos. So perceptual curiosity, trying to find out the who done it, you know? So I don't know how many of you are watching WandaVision right now. So every time you watch a WandaVision episode, I, I'm on the internet afterwards. So I am definitely falling down a rabbit hole because I wanna scratch my brain. I wanna figure out what's happening. Okay, then the second part or the second type of curiosity is the epistemic. So epistemic curiosity, which 
stimulates our intellectual interest. So if we go back to the poll, right? So people tend to fall in one or the other, sometimes both, you know, but you're thinking about curiosity from a very specific way. Now, what we want to do is we want to focus more on the second where we're stimulating intellectual interest. There must be a better way, right? And we want to do that with purpose. And so now that you understand the definitions between the two, where do you think you fall? Yeah, it does depend on the circumstance, but I think a lot of us have a tendency to fall in one category over another, especially those of us, you know, at work, you know, something I know that I would say that uh, it's a 50-50 shot, but a lot of times what drives me to the internet is because it's like, I saw a word. What does that mean? How can I use this? Or I saw this research paper. What? Do, okay, that's curious. And then again, I'm falling down that rabbit hole. Yeah, okay. So both, and sometimes some of you are saying it's situational, and I would totally agree with that. It, if you're at work, it's um, epistemic. If you're at home, it's perceptual. Epistemic first, which leads to perceptual, right, Brianna? I fall so much into that category. I find myself so much there every day, it seems like. Right. Okay. So now that we have a clear understanding here, it really does become about changing your mindset, right? Think beyond curiosity as being a temporary state of inspiration. A lot of times what happens is, is something pings and then we do our research and then we come back and then we forget about what we've researched. And that's why we have 85 tabs open, you know, in Chrome. And I'm guilty of that. I probably have that open right at this moment. So this is what happens is that we jump, right? Rather than taking it to its logical conclusion. And so it becomes this temporary state that we are in. And then you go back to that open tab maybe in a week and you go, oh yeah, I opened up that tab because I was looking at this and I completely forgot about it, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna be able to create those moments that have lasting impact. Right. So curiosity results from a motivation to masters one environment. I love this quote, R.W. White from 1959. Love this quote. It's a motivation to master one's environment. We want to know what's around us. We want to have a deeper understanding of our research. We want to have a deeper understanding of the business. So curiosity in of itself about your business becomes a powerful tool. How do we make money? Who is our customer? Why is finance set up this way? Why does marketing do the things they do? Right? And an understanding of all of these components leads us to a mastery of our business environment, which leads us then to making questioning a bigger practice. Embracing uncertainty, that's so hard for all of us, right? Taking an interest beyond this moment and reframing our, re our reality. And so thinking about reframing your reality, let me put a couple, of, let me pose a couple of questions to you. All right. First off, how do you put, the, how do you put a puzzle together? So in the chat, tell me, how do you put a puzzle together? What's your routine? What's your MO? Outside in, edges first, border first, attach like pieces, right? Spread out the pieces, colors, corners, sides, right? We look, look at the picture first, border first, then color, right? Okay, so we all have our routine for this. This is our reality. So what, what would happen if I asked you to not do that? The next time you put a puzzle together, start differently. Rather than starting with sides, start with colors. Rather than starting with color, start with corners, right? Rather than color, start with sides. Rather than sides, start from the inside. Okay, you're in, I see that, I'd freak out, Kimberly, <laughs> right? So this is challenging your reality. And this is what grows your brain from a curious mindset by understanding that I can look at the world differently 
yeah, you're breaking old habits. It's a, yeah, I think it would be a fun challenge, Simon, really. Now, let me give you another uh, set of questions here to help you understand what I mean by reframing your reality and asking questions in a different way. So what if after all of this time from the 1960s until current, you found out that James Bond was actually the bad guy. Okay, reframe that reality. What if James Bond were actually the bad guy? What if Spider-Man were really a spider who turned into a human? Okay. What if the Earth were actually a moon to a larger planet and we were the aliens? Yeah, I'm messing with your heads, aren't I? Right? Yeah, we're planet X. Cognitive dissonance, that's right. So opposite day. <laughs> right, right. Yes, it does, right? Men in black. Mm -hmm. So when you think about reframing the questions, it's about, are we asking the right questions around us? Because we may think we're being curious in the moment, but what we're actually doing is we're asking the same questions in the same way, getting predictable results. So what if you were to reframe your reality? What if you were to reframe your questions? So rather than a lot of times we'll say, um, ask the question in a different way. We should be asking more why not questions. So we do X, Y, Z, and we say, well, why not do X, Y, Z, right? Well, here's what happens when we ask why not questions. You guys tell me, what happens when we ask why not questions? What happens? What happens when we ask why not question? Okay, longer discussions. You think of all the reasons not to do it. Claudia, bing, ding, 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 ding. Claudia gets the gold star. Because when we ask why not questions, then all the excuses come in. So here I'm, yeah, and you start to become defensive and you become, you push back. You start to look for reasons to settle an argument that hasn't started yet. Who needs that? So here's what I would ask you to do. I would ask you to reframe your question, starting with a how can we and a what if we. How can we dot, dot, dot. What if we dot, 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 right? So by reframing the question, we may get better insights to our curious mindsets. All right. That means challenging what you know. I've got eight, eight items on the screen in front of you right now, questioning typical beliefs, All right? So have a look at that. And there are some things here, it's like, well, you know, we always took that for granted, but we really never asked what if, we never asked, how is that so? Where did that come from? Did we dig deeper? Right? And so what we want to do is we want to challenge what you know. So a lot of times we get into an organization where they said, you know, they said, well, who is they and why are they right? Why is that the right way to go. How can we do this differently, right? So that's how I would ask you to think about challenging what you know. All right. So this means discovery through intentional cultivation. Discovery is not met, made without some kind of intent. It's cool, but it has diminishing returns. So let me ask you, where do your best ideas come from? When you need a push, walking, Kimberly, everywhere, washing dishes, Claudia, that's interesting. 
the shower, William, me too. I know it's sort of a TMI sort of thing, but I, if I could just jump into the shower for five or 10 minutes, for some reason, uh, new ideas and new thoughts come to me. Driving between dreams, walking on the beach, brainstorming, songs, drinking, a, drinking um, coffee or tea, chai, running, chair tilted in my craft room with my eyes closed. Yes, because we're letting the brain breathe and we don't let the brain breathe often enough. So when we do this, when we have a little bit of a plan for what it is we want to discover, we sit back and we think and we breathe and we go, I am going to learn everything about curiosity that everyone was afraid to ask, then I'm in. Okay, my brain is now reset and I'm ready for some deliberate, intentional cultivation of information. Because curiosity is something you have to fight for or else it is subsumed by other tasks. Often we tell, we tell people, put time for learning in your calendar. We might put it in our calendar, but we let other people book meetings on top of it. Or we disregard that calendar because we're in the middle of doing something. We're losing the fight for a curious mindset when we do that. You have to fight for it. Okay, so curiosity is something you have to fight for or else it is subsumed by other tasks. So here are some tips for you, discovery through intentional cultivation. First, develop reading and or activity groups. Now you'll notice there's a bit.ly link there under where it says reading guides and activity sheets. So take a note of that bit.ly link because what I've done for you is I put together an activity planner for you. So for those of you who, who might struggle with intentional cultivation, this activity sheet will help you, okay? So take note of that link there. All right, so next, visualize your notes, mind mapping and sketch noting. Find playlists to share. Our partner today, Go One, they have a great library of resources for you to um, look through and cultivate your own playlists. Pay more attention to your podcasts. Develop those playlists on podcasts and audiobooks. Listen, watch, read. TED Talks, that, you know, masterclass.com. Start using your Feedly page. Start curating information, either through Feedly or Pocket, uh, Google Reader, whatever it is you use. Take a class. There are free classes all over the place, Harvard X openuniversity.com, okay? So all of these things you can do to build a plan for discovery through intentional cultivation because curiosity is not a checklist. It's an action that is woven into your life. So remember, you have to fight for it. The next part we're going to talk about here is creating space for experimentation. All right, experimentation. Curiosity is the thread that leads you to experimentation. Okay, so how can you tie curiosity to engagement, to collaboration, to achieve business results? Well, it all starts there. Without curiosity, we don't have experimentation. So that means we need to work harder at that. And there's an intersection here. When we have curiosity, and we have experimentation, it creates workplace of opportunities, workplace improvements, employee engagement, uh, greater loyalty to the workplace, flexible and adaptable culture. There are knowledge, skills, techniques, and wondrous things that we are leaving behind on the table. Are, are you okay with that? Are you okay with leaving these great ideas on the table because your business and you combined have not taken the time to create experiments to allow for hypotheses, right? We are leaving these discoveries in the dust. And what this means for you is it means that behavior modeling becomes essential. If you have not made curiosity a mindset or experimentation a mindset for you, 
the people who look up to you as learning leaders, they're not going to do it either. Right. So there's a moment here where we have to look in the mirror. Okay. So if you don't control your business ecosystem, that's okay. You have influence over that ecosystem. You can influence curiosity and experimentation. So here's how you can do that, right? Sharing progress, developing a mechanism for feedback. Does your department have a website where it is completely transparent about what you are doing all of the time? Every training program that you create is an experiment. We don't know if it's gonna work. We never know if it's going to work. And I will call anybody on that. I will die on that hill. We don't know if your leadership program is going to work, if your new hire program is going to work, if your sales program is going to work. It's all a hypothesis. So what does your hypothesis tell you? And are you sharing that with the organization? So that way you can take better, smarter steps using those data sets in the future. Okay, next, rethink brainstorming. Reframing questions before you meet with people. So that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. But take a moment, think about the questions that may come up in any brainstorming session that you have. Reframe those questions, play around with those questions before you meet. Now reconsider your environment. Do you have a place for deep thinking and focused work? Right? Do you have a place for collaboration? Do you have a place for you to relax and to let your brain breathe, even if you're still working from home or are working from home? These three areas are really critical and they don't necessarily have to be in your home. So here in the Midwest, I'm kind of stuck inside just because of the weather. But if you're in Trinidad, right? Or if you're in California or Florida, where you might do deep thinking might be in a park might be on the beach, might be as you're walking, right? So you create that, that environment. Change your mindset around questioning. Remember that, what if and how about. Change your vocabulary. Ban the words never and always. Strike them from your conversations completely. Never and always are not good for collaborative conversation. It's not good for curiosity and building a curious mindset. So whenever you find yourself using the words never and always, take a step back and reframe that question. And Eric, I would agree. I would also add but to that vocabulary list. And remember, you use the word but in a sentence, it kind of it negates everything that came before it. So that would be a really good addition. Leaning into failure. So we talked about this, well, very, very briefly, it was in the comments, building psychological safety into everything you do. Build a comfort level in not knowing and making mistakes. Leaning into failure becomes something that really helps your business. Now that is to say that mistakes should not be the default. And here's where mitigating risk comes into the business mindset. So the business mindset is, well, we can't let people run around and make mistakes because that puts us all at risk. Well, here's what I would ask you to consider. It's we're not asking people to make mistakes without accountability. If you do something wrong, if you make a mistake at work, then, then yes, there's accountability for that. But that's different. What I'm asking you is to go into projects and tell your team please make mistakes, please make errors, please try to break it, please, right? And so it's a different mindset. So it's not about putting the organization at risk. It's about testing our thoughts. And it's about allowing us that opportunity to fail forward so we can see the innovation happening. If scientists gave up every time they came out with a wrong conclusion, we would be nowhere in our world today, right? Science is all about failing forward and we should be all about failing forward. And this is what builds that curious mindset. So now what, right? So now what? 
Well, here's what I'm asking you to do. Here is this perpetual wheel, if you will. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to determine the gap. What is it that you need to learn about? What is it that you need to discover? What is it that you need to build? Discover the gap. Then do you have a growth mindset for that topic? This is an internal conversation you need to have with yourself or perhaps need to have with your business. Once you determine your gap, this is what we need to learn. Are you ready for the answer? So that's a yes or no question. Are you ready for the answer? If yes, keep going. If no, do something else. No sense in spinning your wheels. So once you decide that you are ready, it's then about that intentional discovery, that intentional cultivation. You're going to fall down the rabbit hole with purpose. And then you're going to apply the deep questioning techniques that we talked about. Then you're going to produce some sharing. You're going to work out loud or show your work, right? You're going to help people understand that this is what you were searching for. This was the curious question that was in your mind that is going to help your business. And now you're sharing your results. However it is that you collected that data, you're going to share that data, maybe on that internal website that we just talked about, you know, um, or some other collaborative space that you use that would allow for this kind of communication. And then it starts all over again. It's wash, rinse, repeat. So you share your feedback, you share your discoveries, and then it's like, oh, we have another gap. This, once I shared this with the larger audience, with the world in the wild, now we have a greater gap. Now we need to go back. Are we ready for the answer? And then discovery. Okay, and so this is the tract that I would have you take. So when you think about action, think about the activity sheet change your environment, behavior model, show business value, share experiments. These are all things that you can do. So let me ask you, let me ask you in the chat, what can you do now? You're going to get off of this webinar. What's going to be your first action? What are you going to do? You gonna put this PowerPoint away and say, I'll get to it later? What are you gonna do? Ask better questions, change your vocabulary, think, remove never, strategic plan with your leaders. Yes, take this and take it to your leaders. Take me to your leader, right? Change the norm, add curiosity, yes. Share this with the team, collaborate with colleagues. Yes, those are all actions that we can take. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this discussion for questions. But before we do that, here's my challenge to you. Somewhere on this slide deck, and I saw somebody make mention of it in the chat, Somewhere on this deck is a picture of my dog. Amongst all the cats, there's a picture of my dog. And the first person to email me with the correct slide number of where that dog is located, I'm going to send you the book, Think Again, The Power of Knowing What You Didn't Know by Adam Grant, okay? Yes. So how curious are you to be able to go back and find which slide it's on? So now, <laughs> Melanie, no, I had it. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, open up the, open this up for questions. Sarah, I think we have time for that, don't we? Yes, we do. Excellent. I'm going to pull so that up. See here. Yeah. I've got the question screen open. How can we include curiosity in skills practice? How can we include curiosity in skills practice trainings for leaders? That's a really great question. 
Um, what I would recommend, what I would recommend for you is setting up exercises that one challenge their reality, not unlike what we just did here. Um, have them build out questions that reframe. So use a reframing model. So if you go to, there's, if you go online and you Google this, and I'm sorry, I don't have the link in front of me right now, think about reframing. So reframing questions or the reframing model. If you go to model thinkers, they've got act the actual model there. Bring that model into your uh, classes, into your webinars and have them rethink questions that they normally ask and have them then think about what answers does that give us? Right. And so it is starting between that growth and fixed mindset. We want to make that move. OK, could I talk more about behavior modeling? Yes. Behavior modeling is you doing the thing. So hopefully first, let me close out the previous question. Did, did, was that helpful for you? So the ideas of what you can do in your next classroom, was that helpful? Start with reframing questions. Have them do an exercise that makes them rethink their reality. So those are a couple of things that you can do. So um, the other question, I'm sorry, you, you you took it away from me. And now I don't remember what the other question was. Um, Bianca asked if you could dive in a little bit more into the behavior model that you mentioned. Behavior modeling. Ah, thank you. Uh, behavior modeling. Again, that is you doing the thing. Uh, when we behavior model, it's people looking at us, at us demonstrating the right things to do. So a lot of times as learning professionals, we, we ask people, you know, do your pre-work. We want you to read more. We want you to take ownership of your own learning. However, we're the cobbler's children. We are terrible at doing those things. I host many uh, webinars and classrooms and that sort of thing. And when I ask people to do elite learning people do some pre-work for me, they always come and they didn't do the pre-work. So you're not doing it. Why would we expect the humans in your organization to do it? So it starts here. We have to do it first and we have to demonstrate what good looks like. And that is what I mean by behavior modeling. Okay. What do I like about Adam's Grant book? Well, I love that he just challenges you. I love to be challenged in my thinking. And so if you are up for that, if you are of that bending reality and challenging what you think you know and how you think you know it, then I always recommend his books for that. He also wrote the book Originals, which I really enjoyed too. Okay, how do I sell training and education to the leaders? Curiosity will not go over well with them. Okay, well, then that might be, again, let's reframe that. What is it that they want, right? So um, now training and education to your leaders, why is it that they don't value training and education? Why is it? Do they feel that it's a waste of time? Do they feel that they're not getting a return on their investment? Okay, so first you have to figure out what's the fear, why, why not, right? And let them come with the excuses. And now you can reframe what they're telling you. And you can say, well, how about if, how, how about if we do this? What if we did that? Okay. You want to build revenue. You want to build profitability. You want to build retention. How can we get there from here? And that's the question that you want to ask them. So it's not necessarily going to them and saying, we need more learning, we need more training. It's how can I partner with you as a business partner to help you achieve the business goals you want to achieve? But first, you have to have understanding of those business goals. If you don't understand their business goals, and if you don't understand what keeps them awake at night, what their pain point is, then you're never going to get around to this, right? And so if you don't use the word curiosity, that's fine. Substitute innovation or collaboration or some other business friendly word that you think might bring them on board with you. Okay. All right. When I train staff on soft skills, what specific skill would I want to introduce the reframing questions? Communication or problem solving? Either one. 
either one. Uh, I would start with whichever one comes first in your um, in your curriculum. You know, uh, when you're when you're thinking about soft skills, which I like to think about as being really core skills to an organization, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? So. You know, if you're talking about communication before you're talking about problem solving, then that's where I would put it. Okay. Uh, let's see. This audience may be the choir. So, yes. How do we attempt to bring others to curiosity table without having them be placed in a defensive position that they're fixed? Great question, Erica. First off, I bring them to the table and I don't even bring up the conversation of growth versus fixed. Right. This is not the conversation you want to have because you will put people on the defensive. What you want to do is you want to create a, a brainstorming session around a problem and then guide them into conversations that will take them from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Your job is to be a consultant here. So help them have those sorts of conversations that will lead them to a place where they feel comfortable. So bringing people in and saying, well, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting about growth mindset versus fixed mindset, it's never gonna work, right? What you just wanna do is you wanna just to be able to show by example how it's going to work. This may mean that you set up your brainstorming sessions or your meetings in a different way, okay? Um, Think about when you're bringing everybody together, try, try putting a twist on it, saying, all right, before everybody comes and we're, we're meeting to solve this problem, what I'd like is everybody's ideas. And that may mean you going to them. What's your idea for this problem? How do you see it being solved? Or what do you see it? How do you see it um, manifesting itself within our organization? Gather all of this information and then have them talk about which one is the highest priority out of this whole list? We've got 12 things that you see might be problems. So which one should we tackle during this meeting? These first two, okay. So then you can have a different conversation around it. And then they can see how working with reframing can actually build their business. And that then in turn leads to curious uh, curiosity. Okay. They don't understand it. ROI, thank you. You're welcome, Erica. <laughs> All right. <laughs> any other any other questions that you may have? Is there anything that I missed in the chat? I think that just about covers it, Shannon. Um, of course, Shannon's information is on the screen. So if anyone does think of any follow-up questions, I'm sure you would be happy to hear from them. Absolutely. And as I just, you know, the parting shot here that I would give to all of you is I think that Erica, you're, you really did nail this is that I am preaching to the choir. I hope I'm preaching to the choir. Now it's our job to reframe this conversation for our business. Do not go to them talking about, like I said, learning or performance or any of this. Start reaching out to business and speaking their language. Once you speak their language, they're on board with you because they feel like you understand what keeps them awake at night. A lot of times l and sits in a corner somewhere and people think that we don't understand. So my advice to you is to build your curiosity mindset around your business. First and foremost, start to understand your business and then people will be on board with you. Perfect. Okay. Good advice. All right. Well, Shannon, thank you for a great presentation with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for, uh, thank you to Go One for sponsoring this. You know, I, I appreciate their dedication to lifting the industry to a new level and also helping us with our own curious mindsets. <laughs> Definitely. Perfect. All right, everyone, at this point, I'd like to invite all of you to some other upcoming training industry webinars this month. You can register for these events and watch past webinars now at trainingindustry.com. Of course, our webinars are also pre-qualified for a credit hour by SHRM, CPTM, ISPI, and HRCI certifications. 
What is CPTM? The Certified Professional in Training Management Program assists you in developing the core skills you need to manage the future training needs of your organization. You can participate in a number of virtual practicums held from anywhere across the globe. Learn more about the program at trainingindustry.com CPTM. Also, we encourage everyone to register for our very first L&D Insider Series happening tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and it will be on the future of great training organizations. So make sure to register now for free at trainingindustry.com slash webinar for a great event tomorrow. All right, again, Shannon, thank you so much for a great presentation with us today. Of course, a thank you goes out to Go One for sponsoring this event. And a thank you goes out to all of you for attending. As for now, I'm Sarah Gallo. Have a great day, everyone.